Hello investors, welcome to the channel where I talk about investing for the long term through investing in companies that pay dividend. This is known as dividend growth investing. My name is Michael and today we're going to start off with looking at how the market ended for the week and then look at stock futures. Just taking a quick look at the major indices for the week, for the S&P 500 index it is down 1.25%, for the NASDAQ index it is down 1.59%, and lastly, for the Dow Jones Index, it is down 1.38%. So as you can see, the market is pretty much down this week, wiping out any of the majority of the gains that we saw last week. And this is due mainly because it appears that the coronavirus scare has resurfaced as more people are diagnosed with the coronavirus. So even though China has been doing everything possible to contain the spread of this epidemic, the coronavirus is still spreading to other people in different countries. And as a result, a lot of people are very afraid of this virus and manufacturing has gone down in many countries just to contain the spread of the virus. And well, this can create a pretty good opportunity for people who are looking into purchasing oil and going into the energy sector as I know in my portfolio specifically it's been downtrending a lot for the past couple of weeks. In addition to that there's also a moat of investment for the sectors of the healthcare industry as there are main players in the healthcare sector doing everything that it can to research about the coronavirus and create a vaccine and eventually a cure for it. Now the next thing I want to touch on is this thing called saving. Let's look this up together on Wikipedia. So here's the page on Wikipedia about savings and right here it says that saving is income not spent or deferred consumption. Methods of saving includes putting money aside in, for example, a deposit account, a pension account, an investment fund, or as cash. Saving also involves reducing expenditures, such as reoccurring costs. In terms of personal finance, saving generally specifies low-risk preservation of money, as in a deposit account versus investment, wherein risk is a lot higher. In economics more broadly, it refers to any income not used for immediate consumption. Saving does not automatically include interest. Let's now turn over to an article just published a few days ago. This article right here by The Motley Fool says, You'll be shocked by how many Americans have no retirement savings at all. Through this article, it talks about how people shouldn't rely on Social Security to help them stay afloat financially in retirement. According to this article, on average, retired citizens have an annual income of $18,000, which is only, on average, $1,500 a month, which in turn is only, on average, $50 a day to live off of in retirement. Now that to me is really scary because having only $50 a day on average to survive is to me almost impossible. For full disclosure, based on my budgeting for the past three years of pretty much whittling down everything as much as possible, I spend almost $86.73 a day which is about $32,000 a year. So if I were to retire right now and solely rely on the system called Social Security, then I'd most likely be homeless or even worse, dead. Now this isn't making any headline news because it's been known for quite a while. And when I was told this about my earlier years in life, I endorsed saving money immensely. Whether it was working long hours for some extra overtime, finding better deals on some sketchy website, or even picking up coins on the floor, I always found a way to make extra money on the side so that I can put it into a savings account. 
And I did this for many years because it was ingrained to me that in order to have money, I can't go out and spend the money that I had. So instead, I'll stash it up somewhere to save it from being used. The rationale behind this thought was that if I save enough money from working now, then I can live with dignity later in life when I'm retired and no longer working. During that time, I would be saving thousands of dollars at a time and putting it in, into my savings account, which had a very low APR. But for me as a young kid, seeing my hard-earned money grow an extra 25 cents a month was something I was actually happy to witness. As I grew a little older and learned a few things, I found that beyond saving for an emergency fund and having some extra wriggle room of between three to six months of living expenses, saving money is a great diminishment of returns. And instead, investing money in assets proves to be more fruitful. This is my M1 Finance account right here, where I invest a certain amount of money into a Roth IRA every week. And it has been proven to be pretty fruitful for me to invest my money instead of putting it into savings. Just looking at the all-time charts here, I'm up about 21.52% overall. And for this week, it was a bit of a down week but my investment has only gone down about 0.37%, which is way less than what the indexes have done this week. So the whole goal of dividend growth investing is to invest in companies that pay me a dividend for holding shares. In addition, the amount of dividends paid out to me for holding these shares have to increase over time. And with an increase of dividends paid out to me in residual passive income, money that I did not have to actively work for to gain, I can then use that money to buy even more shares of companies, which will perpetuate a cycle of having more money to buy more shares, to earn more money, to buy more shares, and the cycle goes on for perpetuity. This is basically the wealth cycle that I have created for myself and will continue to use throughout my years of investing. This stream of passive income that I'm making through my investments is one way of ensuring that if I do choose to retire, I have the capability to retire with dignity knowing that I have money coming in, not through only the dividends being paid out to me in holding all these companies, but also in the fact that there's capital appreciation with these companies as well. So if I ever decide that a company is no longer a good fit for the criteria that I have listed in my dividend growth investing approach, I can sell off that company and try to take back any profits or try to recoup any money spent in that company. This dividend growth investing is pretty much an example of the residual income of cash flow that I talked about in my previous episode. This right here is M1 Finance. It's a brokerage that I use to invest in the stock market. So what I've done here in my portfolio is I have broken down all of the investments that I want into specific sectors. You can see here I have consumer defensive, energy, real estate, financial service, consumer cyclical, healthcare, industrials, technology, utilities, basic materials, and telecommunication. These are the main sectors within the stock market. And not only that, I have allocated a target percentage of my investments to go in each pie. And within each of these pies, there are companies that I have also broken down into in order to invest my money wisely. So my main reason of how I invest is I'll look at companies that have a long track record of paying dividends. And not only that, they're increasing their dividends over time. I'll invest into those companies and I'll buy more of those companies when their stock prices go down because the stock price will always move up and down. 
However, I know that over time, it will continue to project upward. So when I buy them when they're at their lows, I gain more profitability because I'm buying more shares at a lower price. And at the same time, they're going to pay me out the same amount of dividends and perhaps even increase their dividends over time. And that's pretty much one of the strongest benefits of M1 Finance is that you can organize your investments into pies like this to keep everything organized so that you can see how everything is doing in the long run. So in the long run overall, I'm doing fairly well in all of my sectors besides this energy sector right here. And this is only a temporary movement because of the coronavirus that's been scaring everybody off. So right now, I would mainly heavily invest in the energy sector. However, I do know that there are other companies in these sectors which are also doing kind of poorly due to just the news cycle and that they will eventually rebound back and I can pick them up at a discounted price. And that's pretty much the nice thing about investing is that you do put up a lot of work up front. However, after you finish doing that work, everything else after that is pretty much residual passive benefits. And what I mean by that is I work a lot pretty much throughout my entire week and it's pretty stressful to not only go from job to job to job to do certain things in order to make income, but imagine doing that for the rest of your life non-stop. I think unless you're really passionate about whatever you're doing, it will eventually take a toll on you. And having that knowledge in mind, I have the foresight to try and make as much money as I can now to not only put it away, but rather to invest it in other companies in order for them to make money for putting out my own money in order to buy shares. For example, I have a sector right here that's in real estate. My actual percentage is pretty high rather compared to my targeted percentage because all the companies in here pay me on a monthly or quarterly basis and they've all done pretty extremely well for the past year or so. All these companies right here are pretty much in the green from when I started and I found out that buying into companies such as these called REITs is a alternative way of owning real estate without having to do the actual nitty gritty intricacies of owning a real estate business. I have all these companies right here that I can just buy shares of and then they'll either appreciate over time or they will pay me out a dividend which is money for just holding that company. I don't have to talk to people. I don't have to get calls in the middle of the night uh, having a tenant talk to me about either leaky faucets or something weird going on in their house. Instead, I can live my life pretty peacefully knowing that the money that I put in to owning these companies, such as these REITs right here, they will continue to appreciate over time and not only that, they will provide me with residual income for not having to do much besides clicking a couple of buttons and buying a couple of shares once a week. And that pretty much holds true for all these other companies here as well. You can go down in the link below that I provide for you guys and take a look at what companies that I'm investing in and see how well it's been doing for the past uh, year or so. And so far it's been doing pretty well. So let's move over to the activities portion of my portfolio. We can see here that this week alone from the February 18th to the 21st, I was paid out a decent amount of dividends right here. Let's see. On the 18th, I was paid about six cents for LNT. I was paid 69 cents from Blackstone Group. 18 cents from EPR Properties, 12 cents from Hasbro's, 6 cents from Hormel Foods, 9 cents from People's United Financials, 17 cents from Procter & Gamble, 
six cents from AO Smith Corporation, one cent from Stag Industrials, seventy seven cents from Vermilion Energy, eleven cents from Westlake Chemical Partners LP, a dollar and one cent from Caterpillar, twenty four cents from Paycheck, fifteen cents from California Water Service Group, eight cents from Costco. 52 cents from First Community Bank shares, and 30 cents from Starbucks. This is all of the dividends paid out to me just this week alone, just for holding on to companies that I've bought shares from in the past. This is not something that I had to work for, rather than just clicking a couple buttons and buying a couple shares. I'm essentially making money in my sleep. And if you add all this up, Individually, they're not a lot. However, as my portfolio continues to grow, as I continue to have passive income to buy me more and more shares, the numbers right here will continue to grow. Even though right now it's just a couple of cents from each company, eventually it will become a couple of dollars, a couple of hundred dollars, and I'm hoping before the time that I'm retired, it will be a couple thousand dollars. And so that's pretty much the power of compounding interest working in its way into effect right there. Now let's look at what I'm buying for the past week. So this past week there was only four trading days because Monday was a national holiday in the United States. Uh, but let's see here, I did five buys in total. On this day right here, I bought some shares in 3M, I bought some shares in Disney, I bought some shares in Cisco Systems, and I bought some shares in EPR Properties. Over here on this day, I bought some shares in Federal Realty Investment Trust, and I bought all five of these companies this week because I found out that they were at good prices for me to dollar cost average my way into my targeted positions. Furthermore, on a fundamental level, all these companies are pretty solid for the futures of their business. All these companies pay a dividend for holding shares, and ideally, these dividends are set to increase over time. So as long as these companies pay out a dividend that increase over time, so that compounding interest can take effect, then I will gladly continue to buy shares of that company at a discounted price. Now this concludes the update portion of my portfolio and I want to thank everybody so much for watching my videos until the end. I want to give a little update on the channel as recently I have just hit over 1000 subscribers as you guys can see here and I want to try and give back to this community. So what I'm planning on doing is from now when the video is posted which is February 23rd 2020 to the end of next week, which should be February 29th of 2020. I will be doing a $50 Amazon gift card giveaway. And in order to enter in this giveaway, all you have to do is go down into the comments of either this video or any other video and put down a comment on what you'd like to see for the future of this channel. In addition to that, give this channel a thumbs up and then just subscribe to this channel and you'll be automatically entered in the giveaway. The contest will end by next upcoming Saturday, which is on the 29th, and I will announce a winner on the next series that I do, which will be March 1st. So I'll do an announcement on March 1st of the winner of the $25 Amazon gift card. And I'll contact you directly, so just provide me with some information. I'll probably just give you what the code is, and then I can just transfer you the gift card that way. So yeah, that's pretty much the overall update of this channel, is that I have finally reached 1,000 subscribers. So I thank you all very much for subscribing to this channel, and I would greatly appreciate it if you guys give me suggestions on future video and content that you would like to see on this channel in order to help you guys out. Thank you so much 
for watching until the end of my video. I greatly appreciate everybody watching my videos and I hope to speak to you all again very soon.